In the shoulder, what is a slap tear? So slap is an acronym for superior labrum anterior posterior. In the shoulder, we have a ball and a socket and running around the rim of the socket is a soft cartilage bumper called the labrum. In this video, I'll review the different treatment options for a slap tear, including actual surgical video. Hi, I'm Dr. Edmund Kleeman. I'm an orthopedic surgeon here in New York. I specialize in sports medicine and arthroscopic surgery. In these pictures, I'm gonna demonstrate some of the anatomy of the shoulder. So we see there's the ball, and then there is the socket. And then here running around the rim of the socket is the labrum, which is that bumper. Now, what many people don't realize is that your biceps muscle, its tendon goes all the way up into the joint and it inserts into the top of the labrum, as you can see in this image. When someone has a tear, this slap tear, so it usually occurs between, let's say, the if you're looking at a clock, between 10 o'clock and 2 o'clock, as demonstrated here. Some tears are mild, like a little bit of fraying. Other tears where the labrum is actually ripped off of the bone at that top where the biceps inserts. And then there are other tears which are even more extreme where the tear goes up into the biceps and the biceps tendon is torn as well. Now, as in any injury, there's typically a spectrum. Some people can have mild pain, some people can have more severe pain, and usually it correlates with the degree of the tear. Very commonly, the initial treatment for someone who has a slap tear will be maybe rest from their sport, give a chance for things to calm down, some physical therapy, and sometimes maybe even an injection like a cortisone steroid injection or something called PRP. Now there was a review of several studies of over 240 athletes. And in this review, they found that athletes who are able to complete their non-operative rehabilitation program, the return to play was about 78% when they looked at all the athletes. And about 76% of elite or higher level athletes were able to return to their sport. Now, the overall rate of return to their prior performance, meaning how good they are back to that same level of excellence, was 72% for those athletes who were able to complete their rehabilitation. This demonstrates that for many athletes, almost three quarters of athletes who have a labrum tear can be successfully treated without surgery. For the 25% of patients who tried non-operative management and failed, surgery is a viable option for many of those people. And here there are really basically two types of surgery. One is we can go in there arthroscopically with a little camera into the shoulder and we can repair and sew back the torn labrum. Now, the other option is to remove the biceps tendon from the joint because that's pulling on the labrum and fix the biceps outside of the joint. And we call this a biceps tenodesis, and there are different techniques on how to do this, but one typical one that is often done in young athletic people is called a subpectoralis repair, where we fix the biceps tendon against the bone of the humerus, just outside the joint so it doesn't cause pain anymore. In this surgical video, I am inside a patient's joint, and we're looking on the left side is the ball, the humeral head, on the right side is the labrum, and the uh, socket. And here you can see this severe tearing of this superior labrum. Again, this is a slap tear. And in this situation, it is so severe that the tear extends here all the way up into the biceps tendon. In this surgical procedure, we actually performed a biceps tenodesis. We removed this torn piece of biceps in the joint and we fixed it outside of the joint. But in addition, because the labrum was so severely torn, uh, we felt that it was also necessary here to repair it so there wouldn't be torn fragments in the joint. And here you could see some of these sort of blue colored sutures that have now repaired that superior labrum. There was a meta-analysis that looked specifically at young people, those under the age of 40 with this slap tear. And what they wanted to do was compare the results of either the arthroscopic repair of this slap tear versus doing this biceps tenodesis. Again, removing the biceps from the joint and fixing it outside of the joint. So the first thing that they noted in this study when they looked at the results was that there was no difference between these two surgical approaches in terms of return to play of sport. Uh, they both were successful in about 70 to 78% of the time. Now, the next thing they found was that in terms of how patients reported their own outcomes and also their 
pain scores also were similar between these two approaches. No statistical difference between the two. Both approaches were very successful in improving how patients felt and also in reducing their pain. And the last thing with regard to, let's say, complications or needing to do a, a second operation, again, statistically, there was no real difference between the two. Now, what about older patients, maybe people who are even over 40? Is it also similar between these two approaches for surgery? So here, there's uh, two meta-analyses, one that had about 200 patients, one that had a little over 300 patients, that included those who were up to the age of 65. And what they found was that patient satisfaction and return to sport seemed to be better in the group that had the biceps tenodesis, meaning fixing that biceps out of the joint, as opposed to just arthroscopically fixing the labrum. Uh, but they found that there was no difference in complication rates or needing another surgery afterwards. Now, both of these procedures are usually ambulatory procedures, meaning someone goes into the surgery during the day at an ambulatory center and will go home the same day. Now, after surgery, people usually wear a sling and then go on to do physical therapy. Now, one of the important parameters of success of these procedures is, can these patients get back to their sport? And so here there was a study uh, with about 600 athletes, this is a meta-analysis, and they found that returning to sport in this group uh, was about 90 plus percent. Uh, return to sport at their previous level was only at 72 percent, and the average time to get back to their sport was about six to seven months. Let's wrap up this video and go over a few key points. Number one, for many patients, non-operative approach such as physical therapy, rest, and maybe injections seems to work in about three quarters of patients. Number two, for those people with persistent pain and symptoms, surgical options are able to reduce their pain, improve their function, and often get them back to their sport. And finally, number three, there are two different types of options for surgery. Both of these seem to be reasonable options and a discussion with one surgeon to figure out what's the best for them would take place. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, please click the like button below and subscribe. I look forward to seeing my next video or in my office.